Hey guys, do you always find yourself in no man's land? In this video, I'm going to talk about what the difference between a blocker and a net protector is and how you can use it to set up your defense to score more points. Hey guys, welcome back to the Better Beach YouTube channel. My name is Brandon. In today's video, I am back in St. Pete Beach, Florida for one of our camps. And I'm talking about how you can use a blocker or a net protector to make your defensive setup easier for your team to win more points. Before we get going, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to our channel if you're not already. Give us a like, we love it. Share it with all your friends. It helps us out way more than you know. So for the rest of the session, we're gonna continue working on these emergency touches, but we're gonna add in a little bit of defensive setup as well, okay? A lot of the times when if, especially if we're beginner, intermediate, or low level, kind of open level players, we commonly see two defenders back here all the time, okay? Uh, so I wanted to introduce to you guys this idea of there always needs to be a net protector at the net. If you have a conversation with Mark and I, very rarely, when, if we're talking to you guys, very rarely will we say the word blocker, okay? In order to be a blocker, you need to be able to go all the way to the net and you need to be able to get both of your hands over top of the net, okay? If you cannot do that, then you are not a blocker, but you are still a net protector, all right? The reason that I'm gonna be a net protector is to get rid of all of these lost points that we have on oversets, okay? It's one of my biggest pet peeves um, especially in like B, A level tournaments, is that you have two defenders back here playing and then all of a sudden there's an overset that lands and now that other team's earning a point when they shouldn't be, okay? Because that's, if Allie oversets the ball, she's not gonna celebrate that, but she's still got the point. What's going on guys? It's Chad the Dad with Better at Beach Volleyball. Just a reminder, Okay, if you want the opportunity to work on these drills and skills in the sand with us, with AVP pros and AVP coaches, then click the link below to sign up for one of our seven day beach volleyball vacations. All right, you got fun in the sun, you got hardcore training, and you got a great community of beach volleyball enthusiasts. All right, it's a great way to prepare your off season. It's a great way to get more reps. It's a great way to get better. Okay, so we'll see you out in the sand. And as always, let's get better. So. This idea of net protecting is very important and I wanna see us try to incorporate it for the rest of camp whenever we are playing, all right? So anytime the ball is on the other side of the net, it's my job or my partner's job if we don't have an established relationship of who's blocking or not or who the person at the net should be, then whoever gets the ball, I need to make sure that I'm fronting them. So let's say that Jade and I get served, I pass it, somewhere, she sets it behind her, and then I have to free ball it to Allie, just catch this ball. A lot of times what we'll see is that Jade and I will just be back here and we'll just play defense. But now Allie has the ability to go up and swing however she wants, she doesn't have to think about anything. If JM oversets, then that's gonna be a free point. So we've already lost the point on two different reasons, okay? So whenever I send this ball over the net, I need to think about fronting my attacker. Okay, so Jade is my defender. When I send this ball over, I need to get in front of her, catch it. Okay, this is me fronting her. Notice how I am in front of her. I'm not standing in front of J where JM was, where I sent the ball over. That's gonna be the common thing that you're gonna see. People are gonna wait up the net over here rather than being in front of the person that can hit. Okay, so if I'm a blocker and I can get both of my hands over the net, I can stay with my hips and my feet square to the net. That way if she goes up and hits, I can jump and, hit and block her. If I'm a net protector, meaning I can't get my hands above the net, then I'm gonna automatically play in this, what we call surfer's position, okay? Normally, what I try to do is I set myself up so that I'm open to my partner. So that when, when I pull, 
I can still see my partner if Allie happens to hit cross, I'm open to her. If I go this way, then I'm gonna lose sight of my partner and it's gonna be a lot trickier for me to do that, okay? So once again, if I'm a net protector, I'm in this position. This is already, you guys just worked on your peeling. So this is already me getting into that first step. So I'm already ahead of the game, all right? Then once I realize that this set is not coming over the net, so I have to wait up here until I see this setter set. Once this set happens, then I can pull back and play defense in the same situation where we commonly see you play anyway. Does that make sense? But we have to stay up at the net, one, for a couple different reasons. One, it allows my partner to know what her responsibilities are. She knows that she is in charge of that side of the court. If we're both back there, or if I'm running up and I'm not fronting, then she doesn't know that. Second, it has, Allie now has to decide something on her swing. More than likely, she's gonna say, okay, if I don't wanna get blocked, then I should hit cross court. Or if I wanna shoot, then I'm gonna shoot down the line. That's a great thing for me because now I have Jade's help on defense and if she thinks that she can shoot, I'm doing this footwork back here and I could make that dig. We're gonna do some drills that just incorporate this net protector fronting the defense or fronting the offense on the other side, okay? So we'll start over here. I'll just toss it out and you guys can kind of, let's go with uh, either a hard cross, a hard hit at the defender or you can shoot to the open space. All right, so Evan's gonna front, set's not coming over and now he's in that position to practice that tomahawk. Okay, JM found that net, okay. All right, here we go, let's see another one, okay. So Evan is fronting his hitter, set's not coming, gets off the net, and now we have our defense. It's gonna be very easy for you to remember when you are the team serving that there needs to be a blocker slash net protector at the net. The hard part is when the rally continues and the ball keeps going back and forth over the net. So every time the ball is on the other side of the net, there needs to be a net protector at the net moving in front of that attacker. Okay, so for the rest of practice, you might hear your coaches screaming, where's my net protector? Where's my net protector? And that just means that you both are back playing defense instead of somebody running to the net. Here we go. Good. Good. So if you guys can see, really good job. If you guys can see, there's constant movement, there's constant communication. They're all communicating probably more than they should be, but at no point did it not look like they knew where they were supposed to be, right? So keep the communication up, try to get that net, net protector to the net, and let's all work on these pulls into live play with these emergency contacts. Something we haven't talked about yet, which your coaches will dive into a little bit later, is this is also why it's important for you to know what the block signs are, okay? So if you don't know, JM, kind of go back here. If I hold a one behind my back like this, then that means that I am responsible for my line, okay? So if I go like this, that means that I'm blocking Allie's line and I'm also blocking Jade's line. So when I get into this position, if I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull to the same area that I would be blocking. Does that make sense? Vice versa, if, I, if I'm blocking alley angle, and this is also a conversation, JM and I, when we play, we say that I'm gonna pull line no matter what, okay? But when I play with Mark, I pull my call. So if I was playing with Mark and I held up a two, then I would, when I was ready to pull, I would pull to my spot that I'm protecting. Does that make sense? It's important for you to tell your defender what you plan on doing. For right now, if you are very unsure with what the blocking signs are, just know that you're gonna pull line every single time. No question about it, all right? 
if you're at a point where you're changing up what you're blocking, you're blocking cross, you're blocking line, then during the rally, you can communicate to your partner by slapping one of your butt cheeks, which is kind of fun, you know? Like Get a little tease in the middle of the game. Like All right, so if I was running to the net, let's say we sent a free ball over and I'm running the net, I would say, JM, JM, JM. And that tells him that I'm taking this side of the court. Does that make sense? And same thing, JM just wants to see me slap my butt again. If I go here and then I'm pulling, I would go this way. Alrighty guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you like this video and you want to learn from us in person, you can either visit us in Hermosa Beach or you can come to one of our vacation camps in Florida or all across the country. We are booking them as we speak and they sell out very, very fast. So if you want to find out about that information, please join our newsletter down at the bottom and keep an eye on when our camps go on sale and get your spot today.